Wang. I'm the founder and CEO uh, at Oasis Labs and also a professor at uh, UC Berkeley. And today I will talk about uh, decentralized uh, federated learning. So first, as we all know, data is the new oil. Uh, this data is really helpful for us to make better decisions uh, and give us a lot of uh, insights. However, a lot of this data is, is also very sensitive. And handling the sensitive data uh, poses uh, a lot of challenges. So for example, we continue to see really large scale data breaches where uh, attackers compromise uh, uh, sensitive uh, and steal sensitive information about hundreds of millions of uh, uh, users uh, in you know one uh, in a single attack, and also we continue to see that users are losing trust uh, in companies uh, as uh, a lot of users' data uh, maybe mishandled, uh, abused, uh, and so on. So as we uh, handle sensitive data, there are a number of challenges that we need to uh, address. One is um, the, uh, the infrastructure may be untrusted. Attackers may have compromised uh, the compute infrastructure. Uh, or the application itself may be untrusted uh, because, the, again, uh, attackers may have, uh, 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 may have launched some malicious applications or the applications may have uh, vulnerabilities. And also, uh, some applications may have undesirable uh, data leakage. So to address these problems at uh, OASIS uh, uh, Labs, we have been developing uh, new solutions where we um, essentially built the next generation blockchain smart contract platform uh, with greater scalability and privacy protection. Uh, where we enable scalable smart contract execution and also enable, uh, for the first time, uh, confidential smart contracts. Uh, and also, on top of the platform, uh, we built SDKs to enable privacy-preserving analytics and machine learning. So today, I'll talk about some new research that we have done uh, at, uh, at Berkeley and also OASIS uh, with, uh, uh, on decentralized federated learning. So first, let's look at a motivating example uh, in fraud detection. So when banks uh, provide financial services, for example, giving out loans, they, uh, they need to uh, detect fraud. And typically how this works is that each bank uses its own data to build, for example, some machine learning model for uh, fraud detection. However, as, uh, as we know, that uh, it would be uh, much better if uh, these banks can actually share their data to build one fraud detector instead of the individual ones. Uh, because with more data, the machine learning model can essentially be more effective. However, this cannot be done today because there's a lot of privacy concerns because the data is sensitive, and also there may be misaligned incentives and so on. So how can we uh, address this problem? So there are a number of uh, uh, alternative solutions that we can consider. So, uh, in, uh, with one alternative solution, uh, we can use something called the federated learning. So uh, federated learning is a mechanism, that, it's an approach uh, that actually has seen some uh, adoption deployments uh, at Google and Apple, for example, where essentially um, the, uh, using federated learning, uh, users data and stores uh, locally on their uh, mobile phones and then the central server at Google or Apple can coordinate these different uh, local devices to uh, collectively uh, train a machine learning model in this distributed fashion. So in this case, with federated learning, it takes an iterative uh, approach, uh, where in round I, it uh, has uh, uh, the, uh, the i version of this global, global model uh, uh, that uh, that is being trained. And then this model is distributed to the local devices. And, uh, and then each local device uses its own uh, local data to try to um, update this model uh, using what we call gradient update. And then this gradient update is then sent back to the central server to then, um, the central server that aggregates uh, these uh, gradient updates 
to then uh, create the next version of the model, and then this uh, continues. So in this way, uh, the advantage is that the, uh, each user's data is stored locally, is not actually uploaded uh, to the cloud or to the central server. But still, uh, in this case, it still needs a central server to coordinate uh, this uh, federated learning. And there are, of course, a number of uh, challenges when we try to use this type of approach uh, to address the problem that I just mentioned. For example, in this case, when different banks want to uh, uh, collaborate, uh, the question, uh, one question is who should actually host the central server? Ideally, you don't want to rely on any central trust, and so you don't want to actually have anyone hosting the central server. And also the central server, uh, by relying on the central server, it can create issues, for example, if it became malicious, or it, it can, may also give the central server uh, some, uh, some unfair advantage. So in contrast to this federated learning model, which relies on the central server to coordinate uh, distributed devices uh, to uh, together train the uh, machine learning model in a distributed way, uh, another alternative solution is what's called a peer-to-peer -peer solution. In this case, uh, essentially the different devices form a peer-to-peer -peer network. There is no central server. And essentially, um, the, the different devices will communicate through this peer-to-peer -peer network uh, with its neighbors and then uh, through, again, an iterative approach to try to then uh, together uh, update uh, this uh, a machine learning model to utilize the local data on the different devices to train the uh, to train this uh, machine learning model. However, uh, uh, right, so the advantage of this approach is that in this setting we don't need to trust any central server because there's simply no central server. However, the challenge here is that in this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, setup, uh, the, there's a significant overhead uh, for communication and so on. And especially when the number of uh, uh, clients uh, becomes large. And also, uh, there is more privacy uh, challenges in this setting. So uh, in our recent work, we propose a new paradigm that we call decentralized federated learning, we, where we combine essentially the best of both worlds, uh, both uh, using a decentralized uh, uh, setting where we don't rely on any uh, central server, but also at the same time, uh, we can achieve much better efficiency and much stronger privacy protection than the, um, the peer to peer setting. And the way we do that is that instead of using a central server, we essentially use uh, a blockchain smart contract platform to coordinate this distributed machine learning across the different uh, uh, local devices, the different clients, uh, which holds the, the private data. Using uh, this new paradigm, uh, we achieve a number of advantages. One, again, uh, we enable decentralized, uh, decentralization, so we don't need to trust any central party uh, for the operations. And again, it's uh, uh, much more efficient and uh, can really scale to a large number of participants compared to the peer-to-peer -peer solution. And we can achieve very high utility. Essentially, the accuracy can be comparable to the centralized model. Uh, and we achieve strong privacy where we can protect the client's uh, uh, data privacy. And by using blockchain contract platform, we <coughs> have a key incentive mechanism. So now let's take a, a look at how this approach works. So first, let me give you a strongman solution, uh, where, as I mentioned, uh, one way to achieve this decentralized uh, federated learning is to use a blockchain smart contract platform to coordinate uh, these different uh, clients for training the machine learning model in a, a distributed and decentralized way. So one a strongman approach is that we can simply set up uh, a smart contract on the blockchain platform which performs the model aggregation as I mentioned earlier in, in the federated uh, learning setting where essentially this uh, model aggregation smart contract will perform what uh, the central server would do normally. Um, but however, uh, right, okay, so the challenge here is uh, uh, in this case it can be um, very efficient um, and also provides a strong integrity guarantees even in this decentralized setting where we don't need to actually rely on trust of any central server. 
However, the challenge here is that using this approach, there can be privacy concerns because on a typical blockchain smart contract platform, the blockchain data is public. And even though in this case, the, uh, the clients are not sending local data to the blockchain uh, platform, but however, even these greeting updates uh, for, to update the machine learning models, they can still contain sensitive information. So the question is how can we do this uh, in, a, uh, right, in a more a privacy presuming uh, way? So to address uh, these challenges, we propose HiveMind uh, to enable this new paradigm of decentralized federated learning. And HiveMind essentially ut uh, utilizes a number of uh, privacy preserving uh, technologies, <coughs> including differential privacy, where we actually train a differentially private uh, machine learning model, um, and uh, uh, using secure aggregation, where the model updates that's being sent to the blockchain smart contract platform actually will be in an encrypted form, and we uh, use secure aggregation to do the model aggregation. And of course, in this case, also to protect privacy, we, uh, we ensure that the model is uh, encrypted. So how this works uh, is that, again, we take an iterative approach. Uh, and in this case, in particular, we actually have, uh, we have uh, enabled this uh, decentralized federal learning on the Oasis blockchain platform. So one thing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Oasis blockchain platform actually enables confidential smart contracts where the smart contract uh, uh, state is actually in encrypted form and we utilize secure computing to uh, enable uh, secure uh, uh, computation or uh, uh, execution of the smart contracts um, while the, uh, the smart contract state is stored in an encrypted form. So essentially with Hive Mind we utilize uh, this confidential smart contract prim uh, primitive where again, uh, in this iterative uh, approach, uh, at each inter iteration, the machine learning model that we are trying to train, uh, you can view it as, uh, uh, as part of the state of a confidential smart contract, um, of uh, what we call hive mind. And at each, uh, at each round, the, uh, this encrypted model is sent to the uh, local devices. We do handle some key management, so the, the, uh, this, uh, the model then gets decrypted on the, local device, uh, on the local devices and then the client uses its own local data to update uh, the, uh, uh, this, uh, the, the local model and then it then um, computes the gradient updates and then it also adds uh, differential uh, privacy perturbation to ensure that the uh, uh, then this generative uh, gradient, uh, in the end, we can train a differentially private model. And then uh, this uh, gradient update with the differential privacy uh, noise added is then, uh, again, uh, actually encrypted and then sent to the, uh, the OSS blockchain platform <coughs> to the high mind smart contracts. Where the high mind smart contracts uh, uh, then uh, combines this greeting updates and the differential, uh, uh, differ differentially private uh, uh, perturbations and uh, through the secure aggregation uh, and then computes the next uh, iteration of the updated model. So again, by taking this iterative approach, we can then use this HiveMind confidential smart contract to coordinate the um, this distributed machine learning uh, training across the different devices uh, to enable decentralized federative uh, learning. So now I'm going to give you an example of uh, 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 actual application that we call uh, the, in the uh, domain of anomaly detection. Um, so in this case, essentially, we can update the high mind smart contract to enable, uh, essentially, to train a machine learning model for anomaly detection. And in particular, in this case, for uh, anomaly detection, well, we look at uh, an application of a system log anomaly detection. So as computers run, uh, run certain programs, oftentimes uh, it produces system logs, and these system logs contain very useful information, and one can try to train machine learning models to go over these uh, system logs to try to detect uh, anomalies. And essentially one way to do system log uh, anomaly detection 
uh, using deep learning is that we can actually train a sequence model. And then using the sequence model, we can then uh, go through the system logs to try to detect uh, uh, anomalies. So, um, right. so in our case, essentially, we actually use the real world system logs and then train it through uh, using this uh, decentralized federative learning uh, to actually train and update the model on our uh, platform. And we achieve, uh, uh, we enable strong privacy protection while at the same time achieve high utility. And in uh, many settings, the utility essentially um, uh, is uh, close to uh, the centralized model. So to summarize, uh, we have proposed a new paradigm called decentralized federative learning, uh, where we don't need to rely on any uh, trust on any central party, and we provide uh, much greater e efficiency uh, for training a distributed machine learning model than the peer-to-peer -peer setting, uh, with a strong privacy protection and the built-in incentive mechanisms. And this um, decentralized federative learning has been enabled by the OSIS blockchain platform with its unique uh, uh, capabilities for greater scalability and also privacy protection. And so, uh, right, so with the OSIS network, we can, as I just demonstrated, it's the first uh, 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 blockchain smart contract platform that can enable this type of uh, uh, solutions on decentralized uh, federative learning. And we, uh, we hope and encourage uh, everyone to, uh, to build new applications on the OASIS network. And we recently launched our DevNet 2.0, and uh, also we released uh, uh, a number of new uh, developer tools uh, with, um, uh, 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 with a new developer experience to make it really easy to build applications on top of the uh, platform, and in particular, also including a new, um, and also we are developing new data privacy APIs in particular to make it easier for uh, developers to build privacy-first applications. And uh, we are um, uh, and we are inviting node operators and uh, uh, to join our uh, network. And we'll be starting also a bug bounty, uh, and also we'll be uh, launching a public testnet soon uh, with the staking competition. So the staking competition will be coming uh, in uh, later in Q4, and uh, we, uh, we really welcome everyone to uh, to join uh, the staking competition. And again, um, uh, we uh, look forward to uh, have uh, have people try out the network and to build new applications that couldn't be built before. Thank you.